Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, this is going to be the second part to the first uh, video that I made of the whole sleep paralysis thing. Uh, this video is going to be going into my teenage years and all the, well, the one really interesting thing that happened that I would really say was of worthy note. Um, again, this is all up to speculation if you so desire, you don't have to believe it, I don't expect anybody to because they're my own experiences and they're pretty fucking out of the park, I will admit, this shit's creepy, it's paranormal, and to be honest, I wish it didn't happen, but you know what, it makes for some pretty good creepy stories to make, so... Ladies and gentlemen, grab a grab a seat, grab some food and maybe a drink, and enjoy the second part. Let's get into it. Everything I am about to tell you is true, and comes from my own personal experience. The choice to believe it is up to you. Moving on to my teen years, I lost sight of a few things. I guess being an angsty kind of emo teen, I just didn't really care much about anything. And with that, I almost forgot about the eyes. The feelings of being watched dissipated when I was at my mother's, but the same can't be said for when I was at my dad's. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, his house is the most uncomfortable place to sleep. The moment the sun sets, I am assaulted by the feeling once more. On a quick side note, when I moved to California in the sixth grade, my parents had separated, and I would go between their houses week by week. Regardless of this, uh, all was pretty normal for a time. Though I felt as though I was being watched, I never saw shadows pass me by. But then again, I guess I didn't pay much attention. That is until I hit my more spiritual year when I became a junior. Not religious, but the sense and belief that there is a higher power, and with that came a decent amount of meditation and attempted astral projection. I didn't get far with the latter, but I did begin to notice once again the shadows. They would dart from the edges of my eyes, and I would never get the chance to focus on them. So thinking I was a big shot, I decided to try calling out whatever was around me, and one night I went to bed at my mom's place. I thought in my mind's eye, as though I were saying phrases such as, you are weak and I am strong, or show yourself, you cowardly creature. I didn't really think anything would come of this, and after around 10 minutes or so, I decided to quit and just went to sleep. Now remember, this all took place in the middle of my junior year. I was around 16 or 17 at the time, and I never really remembered my dreams. <laughs> but I sure as hell will never be forgetting this one. Oddly enough, I was back in my dad's, and the dog had passed out on the couch with him. But there was a haze. A sort of dark film glossing my surroundings. And the further I looked to the side, the darker it became. I swiveled slowly on my heel, turning to face the bathroom behind where I stood. With each moment, the world became a dark, distorted mess, all leading to the bathroom. And when my eyes landed on the open doorway, I was only met with an impenetrable shade of black. But somehow my eyes were able to focus on one thing, the bathtub. More like what was standing in the bathtub. It was darker than anything around it, if you could believe it. A humanoid shape, shaped from the void itself. My eyes looked from toe to head, and the moment my eyes reached its face, I was met with two glowing embers burning in the dark. And as if a trigger or something, as I gazed, I was ripped away, awoken quickly, not in a cold sweat, but with every hair standing on edge. If you've ever had the fight or flight response, this would be at its extreme. I was able to move with no issues and proceeded to sit myself up. The room didn't look out of order in any sense, but the feeling had only intensified and become stronger as time went on. I wanted to jump out of my own skin. I needed to get out of there and I had no idea why. Now this is where things are going to get freaky. I looked across from my bed. And what I saw still gives me fucking nightmares to this day. It was there, 
It was standing right there at the edge of my bed. The thing, the thing I saw in my dream was standing. It was looming over me. Its body was made of pure entropy. Its shape human and unmoving. I slowly looked up its body, as I had done in the dream, until I met its eyes once more. Dark hits with burning embers burnt in. Now looking into those eyes were a big mistake. The moment I focused on them, I was sucked in. I can only describe this as being tugged from my own body. It was wrong. It felt as though all the air from my lungs had escaped. Everything just was black, an empty nothingness where I had become suspended outside of everything I knew. And the whispering, oh god, the whispering, there was so many voices in so many different languages, I couldn't even try to remember if I wanted to. And though I felt a disconnect, I could still feel my body. I couldn't breathe. It was like when I was young, I felt so weak and defenseless, and all I could do was will myself to breathe. I tried to thrash, I tried screaming and biting, even choking, but no luck. And once again, when I thought I was done for, I, I was able to blurt out yet another ah! And with the noise came my freedom. All light returned to me, and I was back in my bedroom. Eyes and, wife, eyes and mouth wide. Both dry. I remember that much, at least. I was transfixed at where I saw it, standing at the edge of my bed. I didn't wake my mother. Oh, all I did was cocoon myself with blankets and sit there staring at where the thing had been. I'm not going to pretend to say I know what happened that night, but I can sure as hell tell you that was not sleep paralysis. I have never had an experience like that since, and now I know better than to try calling out whatever that thing was. I told my mom about my experience in the morning, and we actually exchanged stories as apparently something weird had happened to her two nights before. To keep it quick, she saw something at the edge of her bed. It was in the rough shape of an animal and acted as such, racing from either end of the bed, stopping only when my mom looked directly at it. The creature then bound from her bed and scuttled down the hall towards my room. I don't know whether the two are linked, that's up for debate, but I swear that something has and perhaps still does follow my family, if not us as individuals. Thank you all for listening. Oh god, okay, so, that right there has probably got to be one of my most freaky experiences with this entire thing, and though my family has had more experiences that I'm not gonna share because, well, I mean, they're, they're private, um, this is something that has chased my family and still probably does. I don't really see much of it that much anymore. I don't know if it's whether because I just don't really care too much and I've just gotten used to it or I'm not sure maybe I just don't see it anymore if I don't then fucking awesome I hope I don't see it because this shit freaks me out um but anyway uh let me know down in the comments if any of you guys have ever had similar experiences or deal with similar things because this is uh this is some kind of creepy stuff and it makes for really good stories even though it's kind of scary and happens in your life um anyways ladies gentlemen thank you very very much for listening to me today i really enjoy doing these commentaries not commentaries but i guess creepy readings and i think i might do more in the future of other stories just because it's a lot of fun i know i stutter a bit here and there but I really enjoy it, and you can probably hear my wrist cracking in the background. I gotta figure out a way to not do that, because I know it's probably annoying. Anyways, this video's been going on for a little while. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope to catch all of you in the next one.